for all of you playing the home game. Quiz in chapter four. Anything else from homework stuff before we get back on that worksheet we were working on last time? Practice final exam with an answer key. Holy shit. I know. Okay, so last time we got to this worksheet. I don't think we did anything on this yet, if I remember correctly. Anybody else need to borrow a calculator before we continue? I'm running out of the non yellow ones, so if you want to gray one, you better hurry. Oh shit, what's going to happen? Oh shit, okay, okay. I'm glad that ended with no violence. Um, develop that formula. I really desperately want you not to forget that, right? Uh, this was, remember making the list? I had so many successes and so many failures, and there were different places the P's could go, but the algebra didn't give a shit. There's always so many of them. So I have this many successes, the rest are failures. Who can remember what this guy was supposed to tell me? Yeah? more specific, we made a list of all the ways to do it, and this tells me how long the list would be, right? So the number of possibilities, but how long that list would be. Okay, maybe. All right, so I try and give you a bit of a very in your face, here is exactly what you put into your calculator kind of thing. All right, let me do this real quick and I'll tell you, try to put this in your calculator. So this is if I wanted to know this. Oh, by the way, Jeff, let's start at the beginning. What is N in this problem? Definitely 44, you got 44 San Diego's. 44. N is always the number of things you're looking at, the number of times you're flipping a coin, or the number of people you're talking to, whatever. What is P? Hmm? 0.152. 0.152. Probably success, so I'm going to be looking for people that smoke. So the probability of success is a 15.2% chance. So it's 0.152 is an actual number. So somebody else tell me what's Q? Yeah, it'd be one minus this, so 0.848, which is where I got this from. Okay. So if, just for example, I want to know the probability that three people smoke, 
this is how it would get set up. And this is what you would put in your calculator. So go ahead, and try to put that in your calculator. I'll do it at the same time. And we'll see what we get. choose how many? Seven. seven. So I've got seven successes. Right, so that's why that makes sense there. I've got seven successes. How many failures do I have then? Seven. Seven. Kick ass. What's always got to be true about the two exponents? Good. They always have to add to be the total number because we are splitting the people up into two groups. If you don't think you can split everything up into two groups, then you're in the group that thinks you can't do that, and there's a group that thinks you can. Nah, nah. Sorry. That's my own dumb joke for myself. Um, and then now I'll try to plug that in your calculator. Don't say anything. Let's see if we all get the same answer. percent chance that out of any group of 44, seven of them will smoke. Alright, do part B and C. I'll tell you ahead of time, part B's answer comes out a little weird. See if you remember what it means. Yeah. Point zero, 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 seven. We'll find out. That's a possibility, everybody. You could be wrong.
44 people, and I don't want exactly none of them. I don't want any successes. So how many of these do I have? None of them. So how many of these do I have? 44. 44 of them. Everybody's over there. So what do you get? Get what that dude over there said. Get what Knight said over there. Oh, crap. Wow. See that? Yeah, so you get this weird thing. We talked about this before, Adam. That E do times 10 to the, so you just move the decimal back four places, which means once and then three zeros. So you always have one less zero than the number. Does that make? No. So this means times 10 to the negative four. So that's really dividing by 10 four times. I move the decimal back four times. If I move it once, I need three more times. So there's always going to be one less zero in front of the number than this number says. That's a cool little shortcut. So point triple of seven. One level away from So then I'm really nice here. Holy shit. I'm not going to write all this out, but this is just reminding you at least one is the opposite of none. So this should be a relatively easy question because we already figured out the probability of none, right? Okay. You guys know the shortcut to subtract any decimal from one? Did I tell you that yet? And don't say, yeah, I got this thing, it's called calculus. What makes this nine? Nine. What makes this nine? Nine. What makes that nine? Nine. What makes, that nine, nine? What makes the last one ten? Three. So nine, 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 three. Point nine, 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 three. So that works with any one minus a decimal. Right? So for example, if I had, if I had to do, um, 1 minus 0.8137. What makes 89? What makes 19? What makes 39? What makes 710? Bam. If you think about it, it makes sense. Because 3 plus 7 is 10, carry the 1. You made the next one's 9. 0, carry the 1. You made the next one's 9. 0, carry the 1. So, of course, it's going to come out to be 1 at the end. Anyone ever seen that before? That trick? It's related to really quickly. Sorry, really quickly. What is uh, 18 minus 12? What does that number really mean about the numbers 18 and 12? They are six apart. Does that make sense? So if I made 18 become 16, and I made 12 become 10, aren't those still the same distance apart because I changed them by the same amount? Maybe. 16 minus 10 is the same as 18 minus 12 because they both represent how far apart they are and they're both six apart. So if I change this, oh shit, Jeff, you've done it now, dude. They don't want to know this. Too bad, I don't care. So it's really this that we're doing up there, yes? And why does that suck so much? Because you have to borrow a bunch. You had to do it by hand, yes? But if I make this become 9999 9, 9, 9, and I make this become 8136, the difference is the same. I change them both by the same amount. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll stop. Okay. Too much applied math and it's that's what. Alright. So this is 9993. Nine, so let me make C part two. What if I said, what's the probability x is at most 2? What would you have to do? Do 2. Plug in 2 to x. That's not enough. Okay. That would be x equals 2. I want the probability x is at most 2. Right? So what is at most 2? So we're talking about people here, right? That means two people smoke. Yes? At most two people smoke. So what does it mean? At most two people smokes. Break it down for me. It could be how many? At most two people means it could be two, two one, one, or none. 
So how would you answer this question then? What work would you have to do? And, and say it again, what was the magic word between? It could be two or one or zero. So I'd have to calculate the probability of zero, the probability of one, the probability of two, and add them up, right? So again, the answer to a probability question is all the things that match what I'm looking for, right? So how many things match this? Three things. So to do this problem, and maybe I'm telling you this because the homework does this to you. To do this problem is probably zero plus probably x is one plus probably x is two. So you have to do this formula three times. Well, two times, because we already did the zero, right? So we have to do the formula for one, we have to do the formula for two, and then we can add them all up. You guys, you guys get that? Okay. All right. So this would be like point oh 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 seven plus, and then I have to do the formula for this, right? Forty four choose one. 0.152 to the 1, 0.848 gets everybody else, plus 44 choose 2, two successes, the rest are failures. Oops, sorry. So I have to add probably 0, probably 1, probably 2. If I add those all together, that's the probability of the most 2. So will this happen to you on the quiz, on the test, on the homework? Shit, yes. Okay. All right. Let me throw in another hypothetical. I almost don't care. You just throw that shit in and see what it is. What if I asked you what's the probability that X is, uh, what do you got, Jen? Greater than or equal to, oh, well, yeah, let's do this. Probably X is less than. 41. Ooh, I like it. Stay with me now. Why does that suck? Can anybody see that's going to suck? Unless there's a shortcut. Because you have to do the problems of everything that's less than 41. Jesus. And that would be 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and up to 40. What the shit? So, but what do we, un what do we, what's the opposite of this? In this case, what's the opposite of less than 41? 41. No. More than 41. Almost. More than or equal to 41. Yes. The opposite of less than 41 is at least 41. So you could do the probability 41, 42, 43, 44, and then add those probabilities up. Will that be the answer? No. All right, I really want you guys with me. I, I desperately want you guys with me. Does everyone understand why that, that problem sucks if I want to do it directly. Shit, because I have to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, everything that matches less than 41. That's a lot of shit. Come on, Jeff. So, in general, what do I do when the probability question itself has too much work? What is the opposite of that stupid thing? If that has less work to do, sweet, I'm going to get that, and then what? That's going to be the wrong answer, right? Do 1 minus that. That gets me the right answer. It makes it the opposite probability. So I could do the probability 41, 42, 43, 44, add those up. That's exactly the wrong answer. Do one minus that, that's the right answer. So what I'm really saying is this. This equals one minus the opposite. So that is this rule more generally. The probability something is 1 minus the probability of the opposite thing. I really want that to be all right, because then you get to choose which one has got less work. I'm going to do that one. Yes? What if there's a number like in between? What if they're both about the same amount of work? Yeah. Well, then you just <laughs> flip a coin. <laughs> and choose. Yeah, it doesn't, then it doesn't matter. So I tried to pick the homework problems that didn't have, like, you know, x greater than 20. Yeah. Wouldn't that suck? Because then it's like 20, or 20 and that way, it's like, oh, God, they both suck. So I tried to pick the homework that wasn't so blatantly sucky. Right? 
Okay, okay, maybe. You guys get that idea? Okay. yet there's no I don't need to make a freaking table this is the first time we haven't had to make a table to uh, get standard deviation right is understanding I mean that's beautiful so take a minute to figure out what those two things are if you haven't already So if we're in a group of 44, I expect around 6.68, so around 7, which is why this probability was relatively high, because it's the probability of the most expected thing. All right, what's the closest to this number? 7. So that should be about the highest probability. And then this sucker, you just, you just do exactly this. Some of you guys might realize. You can just put this in your calculator, correct? Everybody understand? So everything I'm about to say it doesn't really matter if you don't get it. Isn't this this already? So could I just do the square root of that times 0.840? Is that a huge shortcut? No. So who cares? Is that the same thing you guys got? Anybody put all this shit in there and get this? Did I put that in there right? about this last time. I'm almost sure I did. Uh, somebody remind me, for a normal distribution, normal curve, what percentage is within one step? 68. 68%. Let somebody else tell me what percentage is within two steps? 95. 95. So what percentage is outside of two steps? 5%. Five. 5%. Five yeah, I'm pretty sure I went over this, right? Does this sound familiar? So if something happened out here, outside of two steps up and down, I, you, do you agree that that could be a, what we call unusual? If there's a 5% chance something happens and it happens, when you go, well, that's unusual, right? If you saw somebody that was four foot one, wouldn't you go, huh, that's unusual, yes? And that's definitely less than 5%, I believe. Yes, it's definitely less than 5% chance. Okay, so that is officially the definition right now, which means later it's going to change. But right now, the definition of unusual is anything that is more than two steps up or down. So if your z-score on a test was negative 2.17, was your score unusual? Yeah. Yes, because it is definitely more than two steps down from the mean you would have an unusually low test score. Okay, I like it. Well, I don't like that, but you get the idea. I like the idea. Okay. 
So, this one's going to feel kind of familiar, but we're going to look at it very differently. So here's the mean, and I want to go up and down two steps. So I basically want to add two of these. Is that cool? Two steps, and I want to subtract two of these from the mean. Go up and down two steps. So let's see how far that is. Don't do it in your head, Jeff. Too tired now. You're still trying. Stop. All right, I'll stop. So we got 11.45. That's eight. So you guys got 11.45 up here? Anybody? And what'd you get down here? Down here? Should be about 1.96. 1.925. Right. So I would expect for any group of 44, I would expect somewhere between 2 and 11 people to smoke. I pick a group, a random group of 44 people from San Diego, just a random group. I'd expect between 2 and 11. So if I picked a random group and I found 15, would that be unusual? Yeah. Of course it would. By definition, it would be unusual, right? Yep. Now here's the thing, let me see. Do you guys know the name Aaron Brockovich? No. Anybody know the name Aaron Brockovich? It's the name of a person, it's the name of a movie. It's an older movie with Julia Roberts. Anyway, she uh, brought to attention that PG&E were dumping chemicals in the water and were hurting people and killing them and giving them cancer. So, what's the point of this great uplifting story, Jemma? So, they managed to get the lawsuits and stuff. But the thing is, the statistical analysis, you expect a certain amount of cancer cases to happen to any group anywhere. You with me? It's just, it's just gonna happen. If there's an area where an unusual number of cancer cases, so you can do exactly what we just did to determine what unusual would be. If this was the number of normal cancer cases and we're up here, we're gonna go in and investigate. One of two things could happen. Does that mean that something there is causing more cancer cases? Maybe. Maybe, yeah, and so it doesn't mean that. It, it could just naturally be a place where there's just happens to be more people that develop cancer. That's part of the mistake a lot of people make is they think that when they see that, that means bad things immediately. No, it randomly, randomness means there will be locations that just randomly have high cancer cases and low cancer cases. But those are the places we would go investigate. We check the water, we test the water, we see what the hell. So we get out of statistics and we get into actual physical causes, right? Are you guys kind of with me? So statistical analysis very often is like a first step thing. And then we kind of go weird, 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 weird. Let's go check there, let's go check there and take some samples, maybe. Or if it was really low, then I want to go check and see what are you guys eating? <laughs> what's, what's going on? Can we learn something from you? I don't know, right? No? Okay, all right. So this, this answer is officially yes. 15 outside of usual. I like that phrase. That guy over there is outside of usual. It's kind of like a southern thing. Like you can say, oh, bless your heart. P of X stuff before this, right? So incredibly enough, we're now going to get into chapter five. And here's the deal. Okay, let me get off of this projector for once in my life. For once in my life. 
Is that good? It's a little crooked. Come on, come on. There you go. distributions like this, right? So we got normal distributions in chapter 6. We got binomial distributions in chapter 4. We're in the middle, in chapter 5, is what's going to be called uniform distributions. So when they say state the distribution, it could be binomial, normal, you missed an opportunity. It's okay. Or uniform. If it's binomial, what's the two things I got to tell you? If it's a binomial probability, Distribution. What two things do I have to tell? The two numbers. Okay. What two numbers? So on this problem we just did with the smokers, what did you have to know? Did I tell you? Keep, I'm sorry. Did you say? N and P. N and P. Right. Why don't I have to tell you Q? Because you can figure out Q. Yeah. Because P plus Q has to be one. Okay. So I have to tell you N, and I have to tell you P. So this is going to be the answer for this kind of question. Would be X follows a binomial distribution. So for the San Diego problem, it'd be 44 comma 0.152. It could be a uniform curve. We'll talk about what the shit they want from you there. It could be a normal curve, and we know what that's going to be. What do I need to know for a normal curve? What makes it skinny or fat? What makes it sitting here or, or up there? What two things do I have to know for a normal distribution? Where's the middle? That's going to be the one. Mean how fat or skinny is it? That's going to be the one. This this x or the spread. Yes. Standard deviation. Okay. So in a minute we'll talk about uniform curves. What the hell that means? Okay. All right. All right. How are we feeling so far? <laughs> All right. I really want you guys with me. So all we did today was a specific example using the formula we developed last time, correct? Yeah. That's all we've done so far today. I showed you a few more examples that the book might throw at you. By the way, dear God, if in your homework you tell me which buttons you pushed on the calculator to get the answer, and you don't show me any formulas, no credit for that, right? You've got to set up the formula. I don't care if you know about binomial CDF or anything. I don't care. It's a beautiful way to check your work, but it's not a way to do it. Okay. Somebody should. Okay. So, all right. I love chapter five. It's a beautiful, very simple little thing in between where we've been and where we're headed. Uh, binomial distributions, are they continuous or are they discrete? Continuous. Discrete. Okay. Anybody? What can the variable be? Binomial. So if I said I have 44 San Diegans, can I ask you what the probability, does this question make sense? What's the probability that I get half of a person that smokes? Does that question make sense? Discrete. It's totally discrete, right? It can only be whole number options for the alphabet, right? You got nobody that smokes. One person that smokes, two people that smokes. So you're skipping all the numbers in between zero, one, two, right? Totally discrete. 
what kind of distribution is this? Um, let's pretend like we're in a country where buses actually stick to the right schedule, right? So let's pretend like we're in Germany. So has anybody ever been to Germany? Yes? You, you, the trade, if the train is like seven seconds late, people are upset. Then you go to Italy, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> quick look. Go to Italy, like young Jeff did, go to Italy, wait for the train, it's two hours late. I'm like, hey, where's the train? He's like, oh, it'll be here, what is it? I'm like, all right, so I'm just in the train comes, I get on, I'm like, man, it's two and a half hours late, I need to get to this place, and the guy next to me is like, you're on the wrong train. I'm like, oh. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Anyway, so what's the point of that? Nothing, I'm sorry, just a little anecdote from my life. Um, so, let's pretend like we're in a country where they're on time. So let's say that there's a bus every 15 minutes, right? Every 15 minutes. And let's say we are, our distribution is the number of minutes that you have to wait once you get to the bus stop, right? So how many minutes could you possibly have to wait between what and what? Zero and 15. Yes, does that make sense? If you get there right when the bus pulls up, you just walk, bam, right on, didn't have to wait at all, didn't even have to brake stride. Right, you might wanna wait for the door to open, but, right, so I could wait exactly zero minutes. And of course, what if you get there right when the door closes and you're like, hey, I know you saw me, damn it. Then you have to wait. Yes? Could you wait 7.3946427 minutes? Of course you can, because time is divisible forever. Yes? So this is a what kind of distribution? Continuous. Continuous. There it is. Okay. So. I, I, let's see. All right. So this is a bus comes every 15 minutes. So you have to wait between zero and 15 minutes. Everybody remember this notation? It's not necessarily gonna come up, but I think it does in a few places. Okay. All right, I'm trying to organize where I wanna go with this. Uh, hold on to this, we're gonna come right back to this. Okay, so this is going to be a continuous distribution because the outputs can be any number from something to something. That's why it's continuous. So we're gonna look at this in a minute. Uh, anybody ever play uh, darts? Yeah. It doesn't even have to be professional. You could just be in the bar, and depending on how many drinks you had, kind of tells you how aware everybody around you has to be <laughs> so that they don't get hurt. All right. Um, why is the bullseye sort of like something that everybody's fascinated by. Yeah. So if I, I'm not getting this, one, I don't have the right number of things, but you're fine. So don't come at me if you're, all right. That's basically a decent, um, I don't even know that it looks indecent actually, but if I threw the marker at the, at the board and I only counted the times it actually hit. So I'm like, I had a dartboard in my backyard and there were a lot of them that went here, right on the wall which you know, my mom was really excited about. Um, but if I only count the ones that hit the dartboard, what would you have to know to figure out the probability that it gets here? Let's say I'm blindfolded, right? And they spin me around and I just kind of throw, right? So hopefully they pointed me not your direction, right? Hopefully they pointed this direction, yes? And I'm just throwing stuff. Everybody with me? Yeah. You said something interesting. You said that it, it's small. Right, so the probability that I get here versus the probability that I get in this triangle area, sort of. Yeah. Which one, obviously, is higher probability? In the triangle. Yeah, and it's sort of a trapezoid, but not really, okay. Everybody kind of with me, you guys kind of? Okay. So I want this to make physical sense. If I only count the ones that hit the dartboard, right? then I can consider this, I, I have a 100% chance of counting something that hit the dartboard, right? So the whole dartboard is a 100% chance. What would the probability of this be? What would it be related to? The size of it. Be more specific. 
Geometric, be more geometric. The radius, the diameter. Sort of, kind of, the area of it. Oh. Right? So this has got a bigger area, so I have more of a chance to hit here than I do here. If I'm just randomly throwing, right? Okay. So today, you guys are as tired as I was last time, I could tell, right? Are you guys doing okay? No? All right, some of you guys are looking at me like, do it ask me that question again. All right, all right, I'm sorry. Um, okay, the idea to get from this is that if I have a drawing of the distribution, and the whole thing is 100%, the probability related to any piece of it will be the area of that piece. So if this is 8% uh, of the total area, I have an 8% chance for some randomly thrown dart to land there. So if I could do that consistently, that is evidence that I can throw a dart really well, right? If I do something with this low of a probability over and over and over again by trying, that means I'm pretty good at darts, right? Okay, okay, okay. So what's that to do with this, Jeff? Okay, let's come back to this. Bus comes every 15 minutes. Uh, I get there whatever time. Let's say I'm a tourist, and I know it comes every 15 minutes. I just don't know, like, does it come at 8.15, or does it come at 8.16, or does it come at 8.7? I don't know. So I get there when I get there. Is there any amount of time that's more likely that I have to wait? Is it more likely I, have, I get there right when the bus gets there? Is it more likely I get there when the bus left seven minutes ago? No. Is it more likely anything? No, because I get there at some random time. The bus could be coming, the bus could have just left, the bus could be nowhere near me. Is everybody with me? Therefore, every probability has to have the same height, correct? Yeah. Think of like creating a histogram. Don't think everything has to have the same height. That's another reason why when I say the word uniform, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Obviously. All right, the same. Or, or what comes to mind is like a military uniform or a police uniform, something, right? And they're uniform, we call it that because it's all the same. So uniform probability means everybody gets equal chances. So what would this look like? It's not gonna look like a dartboard, or you know, whatever the hell that is. It's gonna look like that. Now, the next really interesting question is, how tall is that thing, right? Pretend like this is a straight line. See who is paying attention. What did I say the dartboard? If I make the whole thing equal 100%, because that would be adding up all the areas to make 100%. How do I make this area 1 or 100%, right? 1 is a decimal. How do I find the area of a rectangle? Length times width. Length is width. How long is this? So how tall does it have to be so that the area is 1? What do I multiply 15 by to get 1? Is that tripping you guys up? Are you guys thinking to yourselves, I don't multiply, divide. Is that what you're thinking? What do you divide 15 by to get 1? Okay, guys, you're scaring me. What do I divide 15 by to get 1? 15. What is division? Is then multiplication by the reciprocal? So what do I multiply 15 by to get 1? 1 15. Okay. I need some kind of, some, some, I need a sign. I need some kind of sign. All right. So it's 115. So I really want you to know, this works for everything. If I can give a visualization of the probability distribution, holy shit, let me say that again. You can give a picture of the probability distribution right? and make the whole area one, then the probability of any piece of it is equal to the area of that piece that just kicks so much ass. So, would it make sense? What if I was like, all right, so this will be 1 15th tall. 
Now, is this a valid probability distribution? Yes, 1 15th is, is between 0 and 1. They all have that probability. And the total probability is 1. Because the area is 1. So what is the probability that I have to wait for more than 11 minutes? Well, 11 out of 15? No. 415. Yes. So draw the picture and shade it in. Where's 11? There. Where's more than 11? There. What's the area of what I just shaded? Four times one over 50. Four fifties. All right, let me stop for a minute. I really want this to make sense. The more sense this makes, the more sense chapter six should make. This chapter kicks a lot of ass because it's finding areas where the shapes are rectangles, or the shield. Right? You wish the whole class was finding rectangle areas, don't you? Just let me find rectangle areas and then give me an A, Jeff. It's too bad for you, it's only two sections out of the whole thing is finding rectangle areas, aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so let me ask you another question. Don't say anything. What's the probability that I have to wait between two minutes and six minutes? Four is bigger than one. Oh, 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 okay. I see. Never mind. I'm sorry. So you're, you're on the right track. So let me. Oh, oh, four, fifteen. Okay. Yeah, it's the same answer, right? No, it's not the same answer. So, you see, I mean, you just draw the picture that represents the question, find the area of what you just drew, and that's the answer. Because if I can draw. The probability distribution, probabilities equal areas. And, and that's why I like the dartboard. Even if you've never played it, you have seen it. You know what a dartboard is, yes? And you know the basic idea. You throw the dart, you hope nobody walks in front. Hey, anybody, boom, right? Yes? So we all know, and of course we know, the smaller the damn thing is, the harder it's gonna be to get in there. So the probability of it getting in there, if you suck, you just randomly throw in, is small because the area is small. Give me a bigger area, right? If you make a freaking basketball hoop bigger, it's fantastic. I can make, make the golf hole bigger, Jeff, and I can get it in it. And then it's less impressive because it's a higher probability that anybody can do it. And you guys, so we all have this kind of intuitive sense about area and probability being related. But if I draw it so that the total area is one, it is exactly related. They are exactly equal to each other. Okay, so this will be again, four out of 15. By the way, what, 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 is, what is four out of 15? What is, what is four out of 15? I don't know. It's like nine. Point two, five, seven, three. No. I don't know. Two point six 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 seven. What, point two? Yeah. Point two six six seven? Yeah. Neato, that's not expected. I guess it, I guess it would have been if you would have thought so. Okay. <coughs> yes? Um, why would it be 4 if one of the things is equal to, would it just be 3, 5, is, uh, four, uh, three four, five? I love your question. Between 2 and 6 minutes, doesn't that include 2.07 minutes? Yeah. Doesn't that include 2.003 minutes? Doesn't that include 2.0000000001 minutes? Yes? Yes? So that's why we basically just do 6 minus 2. Kind of your, now no, you should be, let's see, my next question, what's the probability that x equals 5? 115. 
Nope. Probability equals area. Put a five on the picture, right? Does that have a color? No, Jeff. Fine. So if I put a five, here's five. Yes? What's the area of that line? How wide is it? It goes all the way from five to five. Zero? Zero. So what's the area? Zero. Yes. So think about this. How many, <coughs> all right, let me, let me see. This is, gonna, this is gonna be interesting. So the probability is area. The area of a line is zero. Any question about equals, dead in the water. So how is that possible though? I'm getting it. I love what you're thinking because it's exactly what I was thinking when I was first shown this. But let me build up to it. Um, shit, what was I gonna say? Ah. Sorry. That's all right, sorry, right. it's gonna come back. Damn it, all right. Um, how many numbers, there it is, there it is. How, <laughs> how many numbers are there from zero to 15? No, infinite. how many numbers? Yes, they're an infinite. So imagine a hat with an infinite number of things in it. You reach in and you try to pull out five. What's the probability? That's one divided by infinity. Yes? Does anyone know what that is? Yeah. It's zero. Now, technically, technically, all right. The answer is zero, correct? Okay. I'm going to get weird here. You know, like, you've been there. It is actually something called IOTA. Has anybody ever heard of IOTA? I-O-T-A. What's it doing? Yeah, oh, I'm getting a call from Texas. That's fantastic. Probably trying to sell me a warranty. All right. IOTA. Has anybody ever heard of the word IOTA? I-O-T-A. IOTA. Okay. It represents something really tiny. IOTA is the smallest positive Think about that for a second. Come up with what you think the smallest positive number is, and then divide it by a billion, right? All right, so it's basically zero for most of us. I mean, if I had point zero zero eighteen trillion more zeros, one, wouldn't you call that freaking zero? Wouldn't you? I mean, hell, we're gonna call point zero 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 three. That's basically zero shit. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So, if they're each, because otherwise, how would they all add up to be one if they're all zero? Is that what you're thinking? No. No, shit, all right, that's fine, that's fine. It's probably better, that's not good. So anything that's equal has to be zero because the probability is the area related to the question, and that area is zero. So let's just stop, we'll just say that. Okay, so what about this? What's the probability for the same from? Uh, probability that x is greater than 15. Zero. Yeah! <laughs> right, we're assuming we're in Germany where, you know, you will never have to wait more than 15 minutes because they come every 15 minutes no matter what. Right? That's what, we're, that's what the distribution tells me. And what's the probability x is greater than zero? No. Um, Probably can't be infinite. Can't be bigger than one. Is it 15? Can't be bigger than one. One? One. So it would be 15 times 1 15th, right? So don't forget, it's got to be the area. It's how much I get here times how tall it is. That's freaky. Well, think about what that says. What's the probability you'll have to wait more than zero minutes? 100% chance. Let me ask you this. What's the probability x is greater than uh, 12? 315. Everybody cool with that? Greater than 12? 12 to 15 is 3 times 1 15th. 3 15 That's neat. One What's the probability that x is greater than or equal to 12? Three and eight, exactly. Because the equal to 12 adds how much? It adds yeah. nothing. Zero. It doesn't give me any more area. Okay. Same thing. All right, I'm sorry. Let me stop for a minute. 
please let this be fundamentally simple. There's a couple freaky things if you overthink it, but it's still just areas of rectangles. That kicks so much ass. All right, just to answer a question you would never ask, are there probability distributions that have other shapes to them? Well, yeah, right? We know one. Don't we know this one? Yeah. What's that? Bell curve. Bell curve, normal curve, right? Do, do you know the area formula for, for ghost? No. Do you know that from geometry? Did you guys talk about the ghost formula for the area? I'm sorry, this does look like a ghost, right? I'm always thinking about that shirt I have with that paranormal. All right, what about this? That is a triangle, holy shit. There are such things as triangular probability distributions. How would I do this? Well, they'd have to tell me what to go from to. They can ask me a question like, what's the probability x is greater than six? Wouldn't this just be the area of a triangle? Yeah. But I'd have to figure out what the height is. I'd to, and of course, the base is one. You could do it, couldn't you? Do you understand? You could do it. It would still be the area of the shape you create when you draw the question. In this case, it would be a triangle. You could theoretically do it. It would be a lot harder than this one. Maybe? No? Yeah. You guys, we're not going to do triangular ones. Don't worry. You guys with me? Chapter 5 only deals, uh, I'm only going to make you deal with these. Right. We're not going to do triangle. Well, we could. I could do make you, I could make a, prop, a bonus problem like this. What about this area? What, is, what, would this, what shape is this? What shape is that? Trapezoid. Trapezoid, trapezoid. Okay. Anyway, sorry, sorry. We're not going to do this. I just want to throw it at you and say, could be different shapes, right? Because we're eventually going to deal with that shape. And what shape is this shit? What shape is that? I don't know, melted crayon. I don't know what shape that, what the shape is that? What the shit is that? Do you have, yeah, we don't have any freaking area formulas for that. Math boy, what are you gonna do when we get to this weird shit? You give us rectangles and then you're gonna give us this weird, no, don't worry, don't worry. We're gonna do chapter six, we're gonna talk about it. It's gonna be easy. Okay. Um, I just presented to you a new distribution, a new way to give you data. What does that mean we have to be able to discover? If I give you a new distribution, I want to have a way to calculate the mean, mean and the standard deviation, kick ass, right? Every time, there's got to be a way to do it. So let's show you that. What do you guys think the average wait time is? What's your gut tell you? 7.5. Does everybody agree? that the average of this would be seven and a half? Anybody, hello? I don't turn around and make sure you guys didn't leave. Anybody disagree? Everybody agree with me? Okay, sorry. excuse me? Because, what does that make, sorry, yes? Uh, no, I was just gonna say, B, how did that uh, equal one? It Which part, X, sorry? Uh, greater than zero. Oh, all right, shade that in. What would you shade? Greater than zero. How much of this box would you shape? Um, I don't know. In my mind, I don't know. I'm confused because I thought since x is greater than zero, then it would be the whole thing. Whole thing? Yeah. So what percentage of the box did you shape? Oh, 100%. Done. <laughs> I got it. I love it. But that's exactly why it's, that's what it is. Okay. It's really, the answer is how much of the box would you shape? Okay. So normally you do the area. In that case, it's like, I just shaded the whole damn box. Got it. Yeah. Um, here's one little question I sometimes ask. What about this? Probability that uh, 12 is less than x is less than 20. I always get somebody to do this wrong. No, x is more than 12 and less than 20. 12 is less than x is less than 20. So it would be between 12 and 20. Yes. Another way to say this exact okay. same thing is x is between 12 and 20. Okay. 8. It's bigger than 1. Infinite. That's a lot bigger than one. <laughs> Guys, stop, stop. How much of the box do you shave from 12 to 20? What is weird about the question? Anything weird about that question? Yeah. The box only goes up to? 15. 
So part of this doesn't give me shit, right? So if I shade from 12 to 20, how much of the box do I shade? Three. Three. So it'll be three out of 15, 20%. So I always get somebody to tell me it's eight out of 15, which doesn't make any sense because anything past 15 doesn't give me anything. Yes, maybe? You gotta bring us all a coffee or something. You guys all drink coffee? Anybody? No? All right, I'm gonna do something else. Okay. Now, let's talk about the mean. The mean, in this case, is definitely, it's zero plus 15 divided by two. That only makes sense, because they're all equally likely. So the mean is just gonna be right in the middle, which is right in the middle of zero 15. Okay. That's why that's 7.5. All right, so in general, if I have a uniform distribution, oh shit, that happened. Okay, Jeff. From A to B, is that cool with everybody? Because it could have been zero to 15, it could have been two to 27, it could have been one to three, whatever. The mean will be A plus B divided by two. And the standard deviation, now here, here I'm, I'm just gonna put that under to your, to your reaction. Standard deviation, oh shit, why am I making it so tiny? So mean is A plus B divided by two. Standard deviation will be the square root of B minus A squared divided by 12. That's 12. That's exa I love it. Anybody ever watch Doctor Who? I feel the same way when somebody says, it's bigger on the inside, but why 12? I'm like, oh. So awesome. If you want to know, I can give you somewhere I've got in my computer. I have done a little proof of this to show you exactly where 12 comes from. I will warn you, it uses calculus. But we're always using 12, that's consistent. That is the formula. Okay. Yes. So a lot of what we do is actually on the back of calculus. So like the square root of NPQ uses calculus kind of uh, ideas to get to it. I will tell you this, this is going to show up in the homework, but I'm not going to make a big deal out of this. I most likely won't give a problem with this on the test, but you still have to be able to do the homework, right? I just want you to know they exist. There's a way to find them. Okay, so let's do another problem. There is a, if I don't do another problem, several of you are gonna make assumptions that don't work. So let's say it takes me, uh, it takes Jeff uh, between three and nine minutes to wake up. Once the alarm goes off. And it's a uniform issue. It could be anywhere in between there, right? I studied this, so I know not. This is obviously a completely made up shape. Okay. Try to draw the picture. So it's uniform like, right? Three and nine minutes to wake up is a uniform distribution. So equally likely everything. Try to draw the picture and indicate the height. Let's see what happens. Don't say anything. Draw the picture on your paper with a writing utensil. And if I'm far away from you, you could draw a duck or something, but at least make me think that you're drawing this. big mistake I get, well first thing I get is sometimes people don't even give me, they give me that. Well, that's, that's shit, all right? The distribution is not showing up. It's gotta be a big old box. All right, here's a big old box. They do this and then they stop. Well that's not enough. Gotta give me the height. And then they do this. Is this correct? No. Hey, 
all know. How wide is this? Six. Six. So earlier, why was it 15? Because the first number was? Zero. Zero. So if I don't do another example, there will be people that think it's one over this number, which is not true. It's one over the width to make the area one. All right, so calculate the mean and the standard deviation. Could it also be something where it's like three over nine and you just, or would you get three over nine would equal one over six, but would that still be right? What do you mean? No, three over nine would be one third. Oh yeah, never mind. Okay, you gotta be careful. You can't do this with little things. It's just, you gotta take this difference uh -huh. and then one over that. Oh, okay. Now you could have where the difference here is one half, Right? Couldn't you have a uniform from four to four and a half? Yes. So then what would the height be? It would be two. Okay. So I mean, you could have that freakiness happen, but that's about as freaky as it could. What's the mean? Six. Which makes sense. Six is right in the middle, right? Now, somebody else. What's the standard deviation? No. Yes. Uh, 1.7321. Yes. 1.7321. So then I could ask stuff like, would this be unusual, blah, 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 right? Go two steps up and down, right? Okay. That's kind of like a generalized rule. Even if it's not normal, we just kind of decided that's what we're going to call unusual. Later this semester, we're going to redefine what unusual is. Why do you think we might want to do that? Um, have you ever seen an indicator, like in your car, and if it goes into the red, Oh shit, yes? No? Imagine in a nuclear power plant. Do you think they have a few indicators where it's green and then yellow and then red? And it might be more complicated now, but basically that's what it is. If it started to move towards the yellow, would you just sit there and go, eh, I'll wait. <laughs> or, uh, no? If it started to move towards the yellow, would you wait till it got into the yellow to like go, oh, let's go check to see what's going on? Ah, it's just a nuclear power plant. What's the worst could happen? I mean, I don't see Brian Cranston around. Nothing to worry about. All right, there you go. All right. All right. So, depending on the situation, the results of being far from what I expect, how bad they could be, determines what unusual is, right? So if I am in charge of a nuclear power plant, I might define unusual to be 1.5 steps up and down. Because <laughs> the minute I get out of that range, I'm like, we better check this shit out before it just kind of like goes out of control, right? Yes? Okay. So anyway, that's later this semester. We'll talk about how will the definition of unusual change and how will they tell me what it is. Okay. Um, Anything else I want to say about this problem here? Not really. Okay. All right, now, I'm going to take this away. Um, in chapter six, We're just going to do a little preview of chapter six. In chapter six, we're going to start looking at this thing. And I, I pretty much gave you uh, a big heads up on what's going to happen. Is it really cool with what I've just done? Yeah. What does this mean? Like, what does that one mean? Yeah. Like, what's the zero? That's the mean. So why is it zero? Because I've changed it into a z-score. 
What's a z-score? How many steps away it is from the mean. So how many be standard more specific? Deviations. Good. So a z-score is the number of standard deviations from the mean to the data point. If the data point is the mean, how far from the mean is the mean? Zero. Freaking zero. All right. So when I'm talking about z-scores, the mean will always be zero. Stand over here. I didn't quite hit the target. Anyway, I still didn't. Now, so for example, we know this is 68%, yes? Mm -hmm. It's actually 68.2 something percent, but we kind of rounded up a little bit, rounded down. Um, what if I wanted to know the probability that Z is between, got it, is between 0.2 and 1.1? Uh, is this shape an easy shape to find the area of? No. But the answer will be the area of that shape I just shaded in. That will be the answer. Oh, no, remain calm. Do you need calculus to take this course? Yeah. So you got it. No, you don't. Okay. You do not need calculus to take this course. Everybody with me? Has anyone taken calculus out of curiosity that wants to tell me? I'm not going to make you do extra work, don't worry, or something. All right, all right. Nobody's saying count. One of the first things, no, let me read phrases. The second thing you learn in calculus, the big second thing is how to get the area of any shape. So what calculus really does, I'm not going to teach you calculus. Don't go running and screaming. If I want to know the, the area under some function, calculus is all about that shit. Doesn't that seem relatively simple on the face of it, but then you got to realize this top could look like whatever the shit it wants to. Uh, functions look weird as shit, don't they? You have the good old Loch Ness Monster function, right? You got sine and cosine, you got whatever that you got, absolute value shit, you got whatever the shit, you got little weird shit. All right, so calculus says, I don't care what you look like, I can find the area from something to something under you. Doesn't that seem like an important, wouldn't that be exactly what we need somebody to do for us here. Yeah. Here's the function, whatever this function is, and I'm going to show it to you. Maybe I will right now. Can you find the area in there? All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you the magic sheet of answers. It's going to have all the answers on it. So basically what it is, is it's all the areas in a normal curve up to two places on a z-score. So I could find the area up to like um, 1.28. I could find this area here. If I look at that sheet, I could find what that area would be. So, which means I can find the probability that z is less than 1.28. So if I can find the area, I can answer that probability question. I really want you guys with me. Uniform curves. Why do I not need a table? The freaking rectangles. We don't need that shit. We don't need the calculus. I know the area of a rectangle. Then you give me this weird thing. Let me show you the formula so you know what we're talking about. I gotta remember where it is. Oh, yeah. I think I know where it is. I'm so excited. The most we're gonna do with this formula is look at it right now for a minute, okay? Is there anything in this weird ass thing that looks familiar? Obviously, yes, right? What, what looks familiar here? What looks familiar? Anything? X minus mu over. Yeah, totally. What is that? What's that the formula for? Does that look familiar to anybody? What is that the formula for? Anybody? Z score. But, you know, X. There's the mean, there's the standard deviation, there's another standard deviation over there, yes? What's this dude? Freaking pi, all right, that's nice. That's nice to see pi showing up. 
So what's really, really neat is if you picked, here, let me see if I can, this is the last thing we're doing today, all right? So just humor me. You got one over there, Jeff, that's true. If I actually, just, yes, there you are. I'll try to kill you a second. You can try this with one with me if you want to, but let's see. Oh, you can't even see, it's too bad. I'll show you in a minute. Can somebody tell me what you want for the standard deviation? Just give me a number. 43. 43 for the standard deviation. Can we make it maybe 4.3, is that all right? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. I feel like you asked me, man. You didn't have any fucking shit, man. Hold on. Okay. And then somebody give me a mu. chapter in this book? Five or six? We just did five. We're all done with five. We're all done with five. Okay, do we have a test on that? Test on five? Yeah. No. Just? We have a quiz on four. Okay. Next Thursday. Okay. We have a test on four, five, six. What? Maybe seven, two, I can't remember. Sometime in the future. It's on your homework sheet. Okay. Yes? Next Thursday in two days or the next, like, next week or in two oh, days? Oh, what is today? Today is Tuesday, right? But I mean, I meant next Tuesday. Like, not this Thursday. Next Tuesday. For some reason, I thought today was Thursday. I think the optimistic part of my brain was like, it's almost the weekend. Are we going to be making an appointment sheet for that? Appointment sheet. Appointment. Oh, formal sheet. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and it's all right. It's that time of day, man. What? <laughs> It had some of the same letters in it. I understand that. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget your IDs. Yes, please, your guys. Oh, yeah. Chance, right? Yeah. But well, what have I told you? 12 out of uh, 52. It's one. It's no, 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 no. I'm not talking about this oh. at all. You guess the card I pick. Okay. Right? Totally different problem. Okay. You guess the card I pick and you'll win. And, and there's a 1 out of 52 chance you'll guess the card I pick, yes? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty low. Very, right. very low. What have I said? If you win, I'll give you a million dollars. Would you play? And what would I lose? You, you pay a penny to play. 
Every time you play, it's a penny, and if you win, you get a million. How many times would you play? I would play 50, one more, 52 times, right? No, you're not guaranteed to win, but I understand what you're trying to do. One out of 52 doesn't mean you're guaranteed one out of 52 times, oh, because okay. I'm going to pick a new card every oh, time. Oh, okay, okay, so... I see what you're doing. <laughs> if we play the game again, it resets. Yeah, yeah, it resets. Right? So yeah. you, I, I take a card, you guess, you, pick, yeah. you put a so penny there, down. There's like so, no guaranteed, like, it could, you could play God knows how many times. Exactly. <laughs> so, it isn't just the probability being high or low, it's how much do I lose and gain. That's why the X, P of X, does the how much losing gain and the probabilities. If you put those together, you get a better idea. So the bigger positive your expected value is, the, the average is how much you expect on average to make every time you play the game. Yeah. If it's negative, you probably don't want to play the game because you're expected to lose yep. on average. If it's positive, like you play because you're expected, and the more of a gambler you are, the, the more negative you'll let it be to still play. Does that make? Yeah. So you've got to look at both. You can't just say, well, it's really low chance. Yeah. No, because you got to bring in the amount of money. And in this case, to tell you honestly, you want to play. Based on the amount of money they're paying yeah. out, you will want to yeah. play so this that, That's the way I looked at it, like based on the winner real. But I get it based on probability, which is incorrect. Yeah, you because have to bring in. It's not guaranteed. Because it's I think, guaranteed. well, yes, because the reward is better than the risk. So you were trying, and again, until you do the XP of X stuff and yeah. actually get the real average, you don't know how much better, how much worse, or anything. Yeah. yeah. So you so got to do the table. Got yeah. it. Thank you so much. Sure.